Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. G'day, Nicole Cox. I was nearly going to say your middle name there, and I thought, no, I better not do that. You can out me on the podcast. I don't mind. I used to be very embarrassed about it. I like it now. Oh. Hello, Warwick. Hello. Hello, listeners. How are you? What's your middle name? <laughs> but it's not the same as mine. I bet it's not. <laughs> if, I want to hear from anyone with a more unique middle name than Coxie, because yours is, I'm going to get this wrong. Is it Wilhelmina? It's Wilhelmine. Wilhelmine. Mm -hmm. I always put an uh on the end for the feminine mm -hmm. thing. Well, it was meant to be Wilhelmina. My grandmother is Wilhelmina, but when my grandfather went to register my mother's birth, uh, because our middle name is passed down to all the firstborn girls in the family, he forgot the A. So it's just Wilhelmine. Mum's Wilhelmine, I'm Wilhelmine. My daughter's, I gave her the benefit of another middle name to ease the burden she's grace wilhelmine but her daughter will have wilhelmine as well it's it's one of those long-standing family traditions that's cool i like that stuff mm. yeah. i didn't as a teenager i was incredibly embarrassed by how weird my middle name was <laughs> it, it added to my deep sense of self-shame that every teenager i have now come to realize carries yeah and i hated it but uh, probably by the time I was 30, I, I'd really embraced it and fallen in love with my heritage. But I also grew up with a mother that was quite embarrassed by her heritage as having, you know, and I can understand now as a grown up, her parents were, well, my grandparents migrated here when they were very young. And so they had a very thick accent still, Dutch accent, incredibly thick. And I think that was really embarrassing. They ate differently. It was quite uncomfortable for my mum and my aunt and my uncle. Uh, so we never really celebrated being Dutch. I do now, very differently. I've learnt to embrace that and I love it. Do you but eat yeah. Dutch food now, Coxie? I don't eat roll mops. No. <laughs> I love roll mops. Ugh. I love a bit of pickled fish. So you'll be <laughs> fine with your stinky fish when yeah, Lydia yeah, finds Yeah, that's why I wasn't you. bothered. It's like, yeah, I don't know, I eat... I eat Pickled herrings, so uh, I reckon they're okay. No, I, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your, your fish, thank you. So, listeners, if you have a more unique middle name than Wilhelmine, uh, I, wish, about it. I wish I'd called you Willie instead of Coxie, but uh, it might have been even more weird. I'm so, glad that you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's pretty innocuous. Mine's David. Um, pretty straight why didn't, up. Why did I not know it's David? We've got all these legal paperwork together. I should have yeah, picked yeah. it up, but somehow <laughs> I haven't. Yeah, we're in business together, but we don't know each other's names. No. Uh, so, yeah, let us know your middle name. Is it is it um, more boring than David or is it uh, more unique than Wilhelmine? Let us know. Hit us on the Facebook page. Now, Thanks. down to business on a hump day. Uh, I want to talk about Christmas. I love Christmas. <laughs> uh, well, at least in uh, Holland, you would have had snow in Christmas, I'm guessing. Never been there for Christmas, but yes, they, it does snow over there. Although it's not called Holland anymore, is it? See, I'm showing my age. No, it's not. Which, Well, there's a whole the other podcast. Anywho, what about me being old? So oh. I, <laughs> I want to talk about Christmas, not for presents and snow. Oh. And all that stuff. Ham. But I, I want ham, yeah. I love a good Christmas ham. Uh, I want to talk about Christmas because it is such a brain-bending time of year for so many tradies, business owners, um, that I, I really think you need to think about Christmas now, I think. The world ends at Christmas, Warwick, as we always used to have as a motto in our construction business. The world ends at Christmas, or at least that's the way every client feels. Exactly. Everything must be done by Christmas. Exactly. And clients and staff as well. Yes, true. Yep, I find, Coxie, all have this, this panic mode set in. Um, so I would like to encourage you listeners to start thinking about Christmas now because the best time to think about Christmas 2020 was Christmas 2019 yes. and start planning for it. And if you listen to yesterday's episode, we talked a bit about our planning event coming up on the 25th of September. 
And no doubt, one of the topics of conversation for many of our members that will be there on the 25th will be the Christmas period. Mm. How to handle the workload leading up to it, um, how to make the most of that workload, I guess. Yes, yeah. Um, if, there, if you're shutting down or you find that Christmas is a quiet period for your trade, how to actually get through that period and mm. rather than just survive actually take a break and um, come back refreshed and not stressed because the bank balance went to negative 23,000. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with staff leave, customer communication, all that sort of stuff. So um, perfect way for you to deal with Christmas 2020 would be to turn up on September 25th uh, and come along to our 90 day planning event, join a bunch of our clients and, uh, and jump in there and, and actually come up with a plan for this Christmas. Um, and the other thing you could do, even if you don't turn up on the 25th, would be to plan for it anyway, um, but start thinking about, well, what do you want Christmas to look like for you this year? Absolutely. There are some obligations that you must meet in terms of um, HR obligations with your staff if you have a shutdown period over Christmas. So there's a bit to think about. Not only do we need to think about what we're doing, we need to think about what we need to provide for our staff. But what about the money? Like the money's the big thing, right? It's the big concern. Most of us shut down and trade businesses for a period of time over Christmas. Some of us for a week, some two weeks, some of us three and four weeks. Many of our suppliers are even shut down. It's the ideal time to take a break. However, financially, that has an impact on our businesses. So how do you deal with that? You have a plan. Now that plan will be different for every business. There's no cookie cutter solution. But there is time before Christmas for you to be putting money away to cope with that break, that downtime, so that you can actually relax instead of sitting there stressed every day, worrying about having to go back to work, worrying about why it's not happening quick enough, because you know the bank balance is rapidly reducing as you continue to pay staff, pay the accounts from um, November, December, there's no income, what happens, where's the lag, how do I make it up, do I have enough money in the bank, like it's a pretty stressful time you're thinking about that as it happens in December when you're nuts busy, like stupid, crazy busy, there's not enough time to think about it. Then it needs to be planned for beforehand. And again, there are no one size fits all solutions except for creating a plan, understanding what that looks like for your business. That in itself can be an uncomfortable conversation. It's a bit like cash flow. We have to forecast. We'd be encouraging you to do the same thing for Christmas time. What will it look like for December? What will the flow-on effect then look like for January and February? Because guaranteed, January and February, there'll be less money in the bank because there was not a lot earned in the back end of December, perhaps early January, depending on how you structure your time off. It can be a very stressful time of year, particularly if you haven't thought about it beforehand. It's, it's kind of like leaving your Christmas shopping for your wife till the last day. <laughs> It's like that times a thousand. <laughs> yes. I don't pick you for that person at all. Are you that person? No, no. I'm generally organized about four to six weeks in advance. That's pretty good. And I'm I'm able to keep a surprise really well. I've got a good poker face. And I know that you're very good at guessing other surprises yeah. for yourself. I'm terrible. You are shocking. I'm so... Uh, look, I have a, I have a few unique talents and abilities um, <laughs> thanks to the way I was put together and uh, I notice things. I notice patterns. I notice changes in behavior. I notice that there's a cupboard door that's slightly ajar that almost never gets opened. And I'm like, oh, what's going on <laughs> over there? And then I open it up. It's like, oh, damn it. Found my present. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm really hard to surprise actually. I'm, you've just laid down the challenge. <laughs> I do enjoy a good surprise, though. That's that's the thing. I just think the people around me nearly really need to step up their surprise game. I actually hate surprises. And I oh. hate surprises because I had so many of them in business for such a long time. <laughs> now, any kind of surprise is a stress-inducing moment. Speaking of, of uh, Christmas surprises, um, one that you don't want is to log on to the banking and find out that you forgot about the fifteen hundred dollar bloody payment that was coming out and all of a sudden you're broke. So um yeah, look, Christmas time doesn't need to be quite as wild as it is for a lot of you listening to this. 
It does require forward planning, though, and and some forethought put into it. And I think particularly this year, Coxie, with COVID and the um, you know possible economic impact rolling into 2021, I think now more than ever you want to make sure that you've got your shit together for Christmas um, so that you have more of an opportunity to uh, roll into the next year in a strongish position mm-hmm. rather than a lot of you... Christmas really drains the reserves and then it's like we've got to get some work on for February because mm. um, what if the work doesn't come on in February? Yeah, so. that you make, you raise a great point. Uh, Now is a great time to be advertising to the client base that you want to work for in February and you can make plans around that now so that you can start to flick on those marketing buttons because yeah. nothing's instant. And I know that we'd all like to find an instant solution to our problems in business, but nothing is instant. And you have a good three month buffer period here that you can spend some time and effort creating the results you want to see in January, February, March. So yes, it's a 90 day planning session, but you're actually really planning for what it looks like after that 90 day period Mm -hmm. and how you want that to roll out. Do you want it to be another year where you start off stressed because there's not enough money in the bank and oh my God, I've got no work. Where is the work going to come from? And have people still got money? Are they really thinking about spending it with somebody like me? You can make plans to ensure that you are advertising to the right people right now. So when they're ready to buy, they're likely already booked in prior to Christmas. So you can actually rest over Christmas knowing, gosh, I've got a lot of work to go and do. Once I come back to work, I'm going to really enjoy this time now while I can, rather than being frantically stuck on the wheel whilst you're trying to take a holiday. So there you go, listeners. Um, Christmas 2020, start thinking about it now. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to jump onto our TIB 90 on the 25th of September. You can do that for free if you head to the Facebook page, find the events there, and you can go register, um, hang out with a bunch of our clients and members who are working on the same problems as you, and uh, start planning for Christmas, but also start planning for next year, I mm. think is the big one, is is you got to look further ahead than this week. Uh, otherwise, you're going to risk having a few nasty shocks, like socks for Christmas again. <laughs> Better than jocks. <laughs> Well, as long as they're new. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, don't send any surprises to me because I suck at keeping them. And uh, we'll chat to you again in our next episode. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Tradies in Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesinbusiness.com.au.